Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Hi, I'm glad to see everyone here. So, does anyone remember playing hide and seek when they were kids? Does anyone have a favorite best hiding spot ever? What? Okay. But the best spots, what do they all have in common? Like, did you hide under the blankets, hide under a porch, shove yourself into the smallest place you could think of in your basement or your garage? It was hot, and it was uncomfortable. I really wanted to win. I was willing to stay there all day, cramps and all, sweating, hot, and in the dark. But when we hide from God, it's really the same thing. It's uncomfortable, and it's cramped, and it's dark. And we put up a wall between us and God when we hide. We separate and isolate ourselves. Hiding will always isolate you from God and from other people. That's our one thing. I want to make sure I say that. Um, I have always been a hider. I have been a hider as long as I can remember. When I was a little girl, I hid when I got in trouble. I hid when I was mad. I hid when I was hurt. I hid when I was scared. And truth be told, when we hide, well, when I hide, I also lie. I'm either lying to someone else, I'm lying to myself. So I was a hider and I was a liar. And as I got older, I learned to hide behind things like sarcasm or snarky behavior. I learned to hide behind being funny. So I'd been hiding my whole life, hiding and lying. So by the time I became an adult, I was well on my way to becoming a professional at hiding. Um, and I learned to hide lots of things, like, I learned to hide this insane drive and hurt that I had to be better. I had to be better than what I was. If I was better, my family would look different. If I was better at things, then I would be more valuable. If I could just be better at everything. I also like to hide all of my mistakes, because I had made so many of them really big ones, the kind you don't tell people about. And so, I'm hiding all of my mistakes. Now, we're hiding 24-7 now, so hiding and lying. <laughs> the need to be better, the mistakes, the... When you hide so much, you can't always find it to pull it out. Fear. I had learned to be scared of everything. I was scared I wasn't going to be a good enough mom. I was scared I wasn't going to make enough money. I was scared that someone wouldn't love me. And so that was something that I learned to hide pretty well, behind my snarkiness and my sarcasm. And then I got to be mean. So I was also a hider, a liar, and mean at one point. And of course, I learned to hide hurt. Because when people know you can be hurt, then they can hurt you more. And if I could let people know that you can't hurt me, then I could protect myself. Again, when we hide so many things, we lose track of what we're hiding and what we're putting up between us and God. I could almost stop breathing over the fear that someone would hurt my children. I had to protect them, and I would think about it all the time. 
I would think about who are they with? What was going to happen to them? I remember one time, my son, my oldest son, went to Cedar Point with my family. Not strangers, not a school bus, with my family. And he was a probably 11. And they didn't answer the phone. And I was crying, crying. I'm like, what if he went in the bathroom? Those bathrooms have two doors. What if someone took him? So I had to hide that kind of anxiety too. Because I had all sorts of things to hide, and this was just another one. And, but what, why, why was I hiding? Because I just wanted to be what I thought everyone else was. I just wanted to be like everyone else. And when I started this journey to try to find God and to get to know God, I had already lived almost 40 years hiding and lying and guarding and having walls up. And I just wanted to be like everyone else. And I didn't know how to stop hiding. I had to hide that I didn't know what I was doing. I had to hide how not perfect I was and how broken I was. I wanted to hide everything underneath the iceberg that was below the water. We had to keep that covered for forever. But what I was really doing was keeping up those walls and isolating myself from God. Because I couldn't hear him. I spent all my energy hiding that I could not hear him, I could not feel him. So I didn't grow, I didn't have any breakthroughs. I'm going to church, crying on the way, crying on the way home. Really nothing's going on spiritually, because I'm hiding. I'm hiding, and I have these giant walls up between me and God. And so, when we hide, we isolate between God and others. In Matthew 27, 51, at that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split apart. The curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. That is what happened when Jesus died. That curtain that hung in the temple at the time was that symbol that separated man from God. It was 60 feet high, four inches thick and like 30 feet wide. So this thing is enormous. The temple's enormous. This curtain is enormous. It would take 300 priests to carry it. So this enormous veil or curtain was torn when Jesus died, and that is the symbol of the completion of Jesus reuniting us with God. There's no need to hide anymore. There's no need to hide because Jesus came to unite us with God where we don't need to hide anymore. There's no need to hide. Um, yeah, it was, it was big. <laughs> so the, the uh, temple where the veil hung, so this was huge. It was hiding the, ho the place called the Holy of Holies. It was so holy, it was called Holy of Holies. And behind that curtain was the symbol of the presence of God for the people then. The tablets that Moses brought down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments were in the Ark of the Covenant. If you don't know what that is, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade talks about the Ark of the Covenant. So the Ark of the Covenant is behind this 60-foot enormous curtain and veil. And to the people then, this was the presence of God. It was so holy. It was in the place of the Holy of Holies. And it was behind this, it was hidden from the people by this curtain. God was hidden from the people. They could not see him. They could not talk to him. The high priest could not even see him and talk to him, except for once a year. So God was so holy, the separation 
between us and God because of sin was so much that no one could see him and he was hidden from the people. So once a year, that's the only time someone could go into the Holy of Holies, was the Day of Atonement. So the high priest could go in to the Holy of Holies one time a year to sprinkle blood of the sacrifice so that sin could be atoned for. And the Jewish people would come once a year to bring their offerings so that their sin could be atoned for once a year. But most Jewish people only got there like twice a year because it was expensive. And the Jewish people were broke. They were the refugees of the ancient world. They'd been conquered. They'd been uh, used as slaves. They had been driven out of their homes. So they're like the doormat of people during that time. They had nothing. They, had, they so had nothing, they couldn't even go to their temple every year to, to give their atonement to God. So maybe you'd go twice your whole life. So you'd live your whole life and you'd get to atone for your sin twice. That was how separated they were from God until Jesus. So the Jews, that's how they lived. They lived with their sin, they lived with their shame because there was no way to atone for it. They had been waiting hundreds of years. People talk about the 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, really, they waited a lot longer than that 400 years because the prophecies of Jesus coming, the prophecies of being united to God by the Messiah goes back thousands of years. These people waited thousands of years to be united with God. So they've been waiting thousands of years to come. They were separated from God. They didn't get to see God. They didn't get to hear God until Jesus came. That came to end all of that. The walls were going to come down. Now we were going to live in freedom. Because we can't live that life that we talk about that God wants for us when we put up walls between us and God. Jesus came and took that wall down. He took that veil down. And when we hide, we put things right back up between us, and then we cannot live this amazing life where we get to reflect God, and we live in this plan that he has for us. So why, why do we hide? Why do we hide? Because that's just our first inclination. Adam and Eve hid. That's our first inclination. When they sinned, when they made their mistake, they hid their shame and then they hid from God. Instead of running to the Father who loved them and who created them in his image, they hid. So we hide. We, yep, that's right, we hide. So what are some other things that we hide? Because we hide lots. <laughs> we hide our failures and our fear of failures. The need to achieve. We can't fail at the workplace. We can't fail in the roles that we've been given. We also hide we hide our pain. We don't want people to know when we're hurting. We like to hide that and say, I'm fine. Even in church, we like to go to church and say, I'm fine. I'm an I'm finer. I, I definitely know that one. We also hide loneliness, especially in today's world. I don't know why, but we hide how lonely we are and God made us for relationship, and yet we're hiding our loneliness. Oh, oh sin. We like to hide all the things that we do, but we don't want anyone to know that we do them. And we know that we do them, but we have to hide it so that no one knows that we're doing it. 
lots of things to hide, oh, our problems. We have to hide our problems because we don't want people to know that we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We can't do it all. We need help. We're not meant to be independent, so we're going to hide our problems because we don't want to ask for help. I might not be hiding anything else. I have been walking with the Lord a few years. Oh, no, we have a few more things we're hiding. Oh, we hide our sorrow. I don't really know why we hide sorrow. Because we should be able to mourn openly and be unashamed when we're sad. But we hide our sorrow probably because we don't want to be weak. We want to be strong. And we want other people to know that we're strong. And I like to hide behind the book because it makes me really look <laughs> like I got things organized. Oh, okay, here we go. So hiding all of these things isolates us from God. It isolates us from each other. So now that we have background on our hiding and the veil and Jesus coming to end the separation from us and God, we don't need to be isolated because he came and took down the veil. Now we can kind of move in to our main point. Oh, that's a good picture of the veil. You see how little the guy is? And it's huge, 60 feet. I was like, is that six stories? So we have our background. Now we're going to 2 Corinthians 3, 12 through 18. And... Um, I'm going to read the version from the message. And we're, so verse 12, with that kind of hope to excite us, nothing holds us back. Unlike Moses, we have nothing to hide. Everything is out there in the open with us. He wore a veil so the children of Israel wouldn't notice that the glory was fading away, and they didn't notice. They didn't notice it then, and they don't notice it now. Don't notice that there's nothing left behind that veil, even today, when the proclamations of that old bankrupt government are read out. They can't see through it. Only Christ can get rid of the veil so that they can see for themselves that there's nothing there. Whenever, though, they turn to face God, as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it, all of us, nothing between us and God. Our face is shining with the brightness of his face, and we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. But we're going to look at the NLT version of verse 18. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Now, Paul is talking to the Christians about the people who are rejecting him. So he's telling them about the people who want to keep that veil up. He's saying the only way to have the veil removed to see God face to face is without the veil, and that is only through Jesus Christ. And he's talking to the people of Corinth. So we were made to reflect God. We were made to stand face to face with him so that we can be face to face. And when I think of face to face, I think of have you ever or seen someone Hold a new baby, right like this. So we hold this baby, 
and we, we look at the baby, and we marvel at how perfect it is. And we look at it with such love, and we hold it right here. Some people like to smell babies, but right here. But this is what God wants for us. He wants to sit face to face with us just like this. He wants to look into our faces and see his reflection, to look into his beloved creature's face and to see himself there. That is what Paul is talking about. That is what Jesus took that veil down for. So we can be face to face with him and we can reflect him. Lots of us don't like these, but. Now, my first inclination is usually that I'm getting, was a forehead, now it's a five head, like I cut bangs for a reason. So that's the first thing I usually see, but. What do you see? Do you look in a mirror and say, I am the beloved of God. We are looking face to face, and I I can see him in me. I can see him reflecting out of me. Because this is the image he wants you to see in the mirror. Because you and he are face to face. And you're reflecting him and all the love that he has for you. Or, if you're like me, sometimes we go look in the mirror and we do this. We do this, and then we we can't see God in here. I'm not seeing him reflect anything in this mirror because I'm hiding and I'm putting my stuff up in front of what I'm seeing. So God wants us to reflect him. He wants to be face to face with us. That's why that curtain came down. That's why the walls came down. That's why Jesus came so that we can be unashamed and not hiding from him and we can look at him as children and he's going to marvel at his reflection in our faces. That's what he wants with us, the way we do with little babies. So when I started tearing down some of my veils I put up, so I started to tear some things down. You know, we had some things, we had some things going on for a while. I tore some things down. And so then I started, I started to see him. I started to see him, I started to hear him. And then my life started to be different. But then like Adam and Eve, I got scared again. So then I want to hide again. I'm going to hide because now I like my life. Things are happening. I'm getting all excited inside like a puppy or like a toddler. But then those old fears came through and I started hiding again because I don't want my life to stop changing. I don't want this to stop. I, I want to live this way all the time and I want to be better. And I started taking it down, and I started putting it back up. What kind of crazy was I? Putting it back up, after I'm happy, I took it down. Because hiding will always, always isolate us from God and from others. And I want us to stop hiding. I want us to look face to face with God and to reflect him. I want us to live the way that God intends for us to live. And we want to do this because there's lots of reasons, but number one, it's a lot easier than living the other way, but we want to live that way because we are in this loving relationship with God. This this is not a loving relationship. This is a loving relationship. And then we reflect that in everything that we do. Now, what if every Christian was reflecting God that way? What if we all stopped hiding all the stuff we do, all the things we're hurt from? What if we all stopped hiding and we're facing God? 
the way he wants us to, the way he meant for when Jesus came, when Jesus tore this down, because that's what, it really is already down, to be honest. We're the ones that do this, so when you go home, you can live this amazing life. You can be face to face with God. So my assignment to you is that when you go home and you look in the mirror, to look in the mirror and to say, I'm done hiding this, and I'm done hiding this, and I'm done hiding this, and this, and this, and all this other stuff, because I can still reach it, the stuff I'm hiding, I can get it. And then to look and say, this is the reflection of God. This is God reflecting his love for me. This is me wanting to be face to face with him, not hiding, because there's no reason to hide. There's no reason to hide. That's why that veil came down when Jesus came to unite us back with God. So that is my assignment when you go home, is to look in the mirror and tear down everything you've put up. Um, before we sing this last song, I do want to say goodbye to Facebook world. Thank you for Thank you for joining us this evening, and we will see you next week. And we will go ahead and sing this last song together.